Okay, look, I was shooting outside. I didn't wear sunscreen. I got a sunburn on my face. I don't want to talk about it. What I do want to talk about is this. Seriously? Yeah, so I got the Canon R6 Mark II. Just arrived today. I clearly just opened it. I haven't had a chance to play around with it yet, but I want to talk about specifically why I ordered this camera because it's not new. I'm not, I don't want to make like a features video or a specs video because no one cares about that. This camera has been out. That's been done. I want to talk about specifically why I bought this camera. New battery and charger. Kind of happy about this. I only have one of these Canon chargers, so it'd be nice to be able to charge two batteries at once. Strap. I'm never going to use that. And here it is. So if you don't know, if you've never seen me before, which is likely, I shoot on a Canon R6. Now I do all kinds of photos and videos, but I am a hybrid shooter, I do both. So I need cameras that can do both because I'm just not at the point in my career where I can have a dedicated cinema camera and dedicated photo cameras. So when choosing a camera, it's important to me that I choose something that can do both. Now I do a lot of different stuff, but I shoot a lot of weddings in particular. I just started shooting wedding videos last summer and I've gotten into it a lot since then. But currently right now I shoot on my Canon R6, which I upgraded to a couple years ago. And it's a great camera. I love it for photos. It's amazing for photos and it has a lot of great video features as well. At the time it was groundbreaking for Canon when the R6 came out because it was all the features and the same sensor and same processor as the 1DX Mark II, which was an $8,000 camera body in a small mirrorless compact for like, I can't remember how much it was, like two, th two and a half thousand. And the Canon R6 has served me well. I'm actually keeping it as my B cam. But the major issue that I deal with, specifically with weddings, it doesn't come up pretty much in any other type of shooting, but specifically with weddings, is the overheating. Now, to the R6's credit, I've never actually had it overheat and shut down during a wedding because you need to record for roughly 45 minutes straight to get that to happen. That's recording 4K 60 log. Look at this, nice and shiny. Is it supposed to do that? Do you hear that noise? God, you can really see how burn my face is when I zoom in. I'm guessing that's the Ibis, hopefully. Yeah, so I love the R6 and it does everything I need it to do. But on a wedding day, it's such an extra stressor to see. If you don't know, if you don't have a Canon camera, essentially the little timer in the corner that tells you how much storage you have left on your SD card in recording minutes. Once your camera starts to get hot, that changes from the amount of time you have left on your SD card to the amount of time until your camera overheats and shuts down. You can tell because when you have an empty card, it'll go from 29 minutes and 59 seconds to 25 minutes flat even. And you're like, okay, the countdown has started. And then you record for a few more minutes. You record maybe, I don't know, 10, 20 minutes go by. You look at, you hit stop on your video and you look at the timer in the corner. And now it says, you have 20 minutes flat until the camera overheats. Now, again, I've never actually had it fully overheat and just shut off on me, thankfully, because if you record small clips, like you do, you know, a minute here, 10 seconds here, which is kind of how wedding days usually go. You're capturing little detail shots for 10 seconds here and there. But even doing that over enough time, over a few hours, the camera will get down to, it'll be like five minutes until you overheat. And you're like, it's kind of stressful and just not something you should have to deal with when you're shooting because especially with weddings, if your camera overheats like during the ceremony or something, which is when it would most likely overheat because that is when it's recording for a long period of time and you miss something like the first kiss or I don't know, some important part of the vows or like a funny moment that happened during the ceremony, that moment is just gone. So that's probably the biggest reason why I chose the R6 Mark II as my camera because it's because in terms of image quality, it's pretty similar to the R6. It's got a few more photo features and it's got a slightly higher megapixel sensor. It's like 24 megapixels instead of 20 on the R6. But for the most part, the quality coming out of these two cameras is gonna look identical. The main reason that I chose this is just the fact that not only does it not overheat, but it also doesn't have the 30 minute recording cap. So let me get this battery in here, flick it into video mode. This is gonna be the trickiest part for me to get used to is now instead of this being the power button on the side here, it's switch between photo and video and the power button is up here. Let me pop in an SD card here so you can see what I'm talking about. Now normally this is for tax reasons. Uh, photo cameras like hybrid cameras have a 30 minute recording cap. I don't know if they changed that if this is like now for tax reasons a video camera. I don't really know exactly what changed about it but now they're allowed to extend that past the 30 minutes. So you'll see here now in the corner it says six hours, which is the limit of the SD card in here. I don't think it would go for six hours, the battery would probably die first. But the point is, 
Now I can have my R6 on a gimbal running around during a ceremony, set this up on a tripod in the corner, pointed at a specific point, and let this run, and I know for sure it's not just gonna stop recording on me. And now the other thing is that I am keeping my R6. I'm not selling it. I Part of the reason I got this is not just because the issues with my R6, it's because I do need a second body. I've gotten by fine with just my R6 for most stuff, but even on a shoot where you don't need a second camera, Having an extra body just in case, especially on something like a wedding day, I keep coming back to that, but it's just something you can't reschedule. So to have my camera body just give out on me on the day and not have any sort of backup or any kind of plan for capturing images, if my camera fails or breaks or drops or something, it's really great to know that I can bring something else along and still capture images. It also means for content like this, now I can have an A cam and a B cam, I can set one up over to the side, I can have a top-down view if I need one. And probably the last reason I went with the R6 Mark II, it, maybe not a reason I chose it, but something that I was glad about it, is that it's still got the dual recording slots, which is super important to me, uh, which records to two cards as you shoot, so that you instantly have a backup, because SD cards are not great in terms of reliability. You never know when one's gonna fail, so it's nice to just instantly record to two cards in case something happens. However, more high-end cameras, like the Canon R5, have CF Express cards. They'll have one CF Express, one SD card. And that's because for certain types of video shooting, you need the faster write speeds of the CF Express to write certain types of footage, like 8K or 4K 120 FPS. But I don't need either of those things. And CF Express cards are just a little more expensive than SD cards. So I am perfectly happy to stick with SD cards in both cameras. I know I can just bring a whack load of SD cards and I'm covered for both cameras. Now this camera also has a smart hot shoe, which I actually totally forgot about. So it has an extra little connector in the hot shoe and that's going to allow it to connect to things like microphones so you don't have to plug the microphone into the camera. So that might be something cool to play around with as well. But yeah, although it doesn't make a huge difference for the actual quality of my work, I am really excited to be able to have two cameras and it's just gonna make my work life and my the usability of my everyday gear a lot better. Now the next problem I have is where do I put it in my camera bag? I think that's gonna be a whole other video, just relaying out my camera bag, showing you how I'm gonna go about doing that. So if you're interested in that, like the specifics of how much stuff can I possibly bring in a backpack, stay tuned. If you wanna check out any of my wedding work that I have not shot on this, but I'm going to, links to my website, Instagram, TikTok, all that stuff's in the description. I post pretty much every day on TikTok and Instagram, so you can check me out there if you want more regular updates. Also, hopefully my face will have healed for the next video. You can also check links to this camera, this camera, and all my other stuff down in the description if you're interested in picking up anything that I use on a regular basis, I have all that stuff down there. So thank you guys for watching, I will catch you in the next one. Peace.